my exclusive interview with the woman in charge in Bangladesh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Prime Minister, welcome to the program. And I obviously would like to start by offering sincere condolences for all the lives that were lost in that terrible tragedy. And it's a very, very, very sad story, really. It's so painful. It's very unbearable. Prime Minister, I hear your pain, and yet I also hear you say, and you've said, that 90% of these factories in Bangladesh are not up to scratch. There are only 18 inspectors for more than 100,000 factories and, and, and these kinds of bu uh, buildings. How on earth can you get a grip on this with that crazy ratio? Before this incident, we adopted the labor law. Already our cabinet passed the labor law. This law will go to the parliament and we will pass this labor law. And also the labor policy. For the first time, Bangladesh adopted this labor policy. So we are very much concerned about it and we have already taken all these steps. But, you know, in anywhere in the world, any accident can take place. You cannot, you know, predict anything. Even in many developed countries, we can see that recently there was a, you know, accident in a fertilizer industry in Texas. So accident may take place, but as because this is a growing industry and as because they are, you know, uh, buyers and also the investors are coming, Bangladesh now is a place for good condition for the investment. Whoa, so people Prime are Minister. very much attracted and they are coming here and they are, yes. Well, Prime Minister, all of that is a threat right <laughs> now. Not we'll go me through to it. Finish I, I, am, my word. I, I am allowing you, Prime Minister, but when you say we couldn't predict it, of course you could. This factory was shown on television the very night before. There were huge cracks in the walls. The owner said, oh, no, this is just about the plaster. And the very next day, the factory collapsed. So it could have been predicted. Who does the blame fall on then? Yes, you're very correct. From local administration and the industrial police, they stop working in this building and they remove all the labor from the building in the previous night. But unfortunately, in the morning, the owner of the factory, they put pressure to the labor to enter. But industrial police and the law enforcement agency and administration, they tried to stop them. But they said that at night, it didn't collapse, so it is, uh, the condition is not that bad. That way, they sent the labor. But even then, the industrial police, time and again, they told them that the labor should not work in this condition, but that moment the accident took place. So it is not true that the government hasn't taken any steps. We have taken steps and we try to prevent them. Surely then that needs to be regulated because here's the facts about this man uh, who actually owns that company. First of all, he was a top member of the ruling Awami party, which is your party. He was the head of the youth league of that. No, it is not true. Well, that is what we're told. He was a youth no, the leader it is not of the, true. the youth wing. You're saying it's not true? No, no, no. The and wrong information. All right. And I told you that in this building, there are five garment industry, five owners. They put pressure, they send the labor. Okay. It is not the, the, only the owner of the building. We arrested him. You know that. We arrested him. We arrested all the owners and the engineer and all the people. We have taken all necessary action. You must consider that, uh, yes, we have taken all the necessary steps and we arrested them. What will happen and to him? And law will take its own course. What? We're not going to, you know, save him, no. The criminal is criminal. They will get all, you know, we brought to book, so they will get all the necessary action. All right, so that you, we can ensure you. You, you say that he's and a criminal yes, and the law will it, take... It is our promise to the people. Okay, I'm sure they'll be delighted to hear exactly, that. Exactly, yes. Of course, we already we have arrested him. Look, within this short period of time, we have taken action, legal action. We arrested them. We filed cases against the, them. 
the owners of the la uh, building and also the owners of the factory. So our government, we take all necessary steps. The problem is the people have seen this and these promises before and they don't actually say that they believe he will be fully prom punished. But of course, we'll wait to see how this case proceeds. But I want to ask you about the endemic corruption in this regard, because all the reports say that he and his family basically got this building and this property by fairly nefarious means. Then, because of their high and intense political collections, people just look the other way. Officials don't dare uh, confront him. He built more floors, and this was very unstable. And furthermore, about 10% of members of parliament are direct owners of these kinds of factories and businesses. Do you not have a rampant corruption problem in this regard? Look, you are going to other point. No, I'm not, The Prime Minister. owner of this building, I told you in 2005, they grabbed this land and built up this building. That time, Awamili was not in power. You should mind that, you should know that. And the business and factory owner by people, they are the business people. Any business person, if they commit any kind of crime, our government always take action. We are here to serve the people, not to protect the corrupt people, at least not our government, that I can ensure you. All right, well, people will be very happy to hear that because even last year, the uh, US ambassador to Bangladesh said the following. These developments could coalesce into a perfect storm that could threaten the Bangladesh brand in America. I point this out because I want to know whether you're worried about retailers walking away from what is a huge industry for you. Already Disney, which is one of the world's biggest, if not the world's biggest licensor, has said no more product from Bangladesh. Canada is reconsidering its uh, favorable trade status with you. The EU is considering penalties, and it is your largest trading partner. This is now going to become a major economic crisis for you. Do you agree? Listen, if they want to do business, this uh, buyer, they also consider they should increase the price of the uh, garments so that the business can run properly and the labor can get good salary. So they are also partly responsible for it. What I feel that all the investors, when they come here, yes, they get cheap labor and that's why they come here. And also our labor, they are very sincere, they work very hard and they work very perfectly. That's why they come here and they will come and they will, uh, you know, do business. That's what I think. You have very, very good workers and that's why people like their product. But your government is also accused of being very hostile to unions and to labor. And so have successive Bangladeshi governments been accused of that. In fact, as you very well know, last year, the U.S. Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, was in Bangladesh, and she asked your government, she asked the government to investigate the murder of one of the main union leaders. His name was Aminul Islam, and he was tortured and murdered. There has been no answer about why that happened. And perhaps if you'd been alive and there was more organization, these people would not have been forced by this corrupt owner to go into that factory when you say the government said it should have been closed down. What is your answer on the issue of Aminul Islam? Which union he belongs to? I can tell you that he was What known, is the name of the union? I can tell you that he what was is the known industry? to try... Do you know that? Well, that's what we're told, is that he was trying to organize labor so that it would not be in this kind of situation where workers are hostage to the very people you say are doing illegal things, like making them go back into factories that you say your government... No, no, you are wrong. Stopped. What am you, I wrong about? You are wrong. About you are what? wrong. Even, uh, even nobody, nobody knew... Listen, nobody knew that he was a labor leader. Nobody knew in this country that he was a labor leader. He, he was killed or something happened. His dead body was recovered after four days by our law enforcing agencies. It was our 
law enforcement and says, oh, police. Police recovered his dead body. We didn't know that he was a union, you know, leader or anything. But we have all sympathy for them. Now the case is under investigation. We feel our responsibility. So this blame game should not be there. All right. Well, you know what? You say we don't know about it, but the Secretary of State of the United States of America comes to Bangladesh and asks your government to investigate. All right. Now you've talked about that, and you say that you care for your people and your workers. It, the investigation is going on. Okay. Listen, listen, the investigation is going on. I guess I want to know whether you feel that Bangladesh, your government, other governments, should now be more... Uh, careful about labor should allow them to organize so these kinds of terrible things don't happen again and I want to ask you in that regard what your reaction is to what the Pope himself said yesterday publicly he said not paying a just wage not providing work focusing exclusively on the balance books on financial statements only looking at making personal profit that goes against God and he called the Bangladesh labor force slave labor that is the pope saying that what is your reaction to that on behalf of our labor i myself sometimes bargain with the owner so that our labor can get good salary and good condition and from our government we we have already passed one project to build up dormitories and hostels for our labor we ensure their health care and other facilities. So in our country, yes, it's a poor country, people come to work, but our government, I, I, I can't say about other government, but I can tell you about my government, we are always in favor of labor and their better condition should be ensured, and we uh, always consider that. Prime Minister, there does seem to be a tremendous lack of transparency. And I say this because CNN has not been allowed to come into Bangladesh to report all of this. And frankly, to see all the things that you're saying, it would be good if we were allowed to do that, and nor are other international news organizations either. Your I'm sorry, CNN was not allowed to no. come to Bangladesh? No, and I would ask you right now, please, no, no. to change what that. What did you say? I did say that. CNN is not allowed to come no, to no. cover this I'm story. I'm sorry. No, ma'am. What did you say? I said CNN and other international organizations yeah? have not been allowed to come to Bangladesh as journalists to cover this story. They have put very draconian conditions no, on... No, it is not true. It is true. No, 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 no. Yes, yes, it is true. No, no, Bangladesh is a free country. Ah, we would in hope our, that. Listen, in our country, we have private television. What? If, if it, no, tell me one thing. If it is prevented, then why I am talking to you? No, because I'm not there, I'm not Prime supposed Minister. to talk to you. <laughs> Prime Minister, I'm not if there. We, if we prevent you, no, no, if we prevent CNN, then why I am talking to you? Please then, me. okay, you will stop it. You don't publish it. I, I if, if you mean that, that we didn't allow CNN to come to Bangladesh, then you should not publish my interview. Well, I'll tell you okay? what, our, our, our CNN authorities and our journalists have been told that they must sign waivers, sign papers, and I'll read you what they've been told. Visa officials say they have the right to review, confiscate, Listen, any country, unfit if you material. Enter, no, that's any not true. country, if you enter... No, no, it is not. No, I, I don't know about it. But yes, of course, the, there are some rules, regulation. No. Each and every country, they have this rules, regulation, and everybody should follow that. We lost our people, and I do politics for these people, this labor. So each and every life is very precious to me. And I personally feel sorry for them that who lost their nearest and dearest one. And they are my responsibility. So I have to look after them, and we are doing it. Prime Minister, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much.